Hello and welcome back to the Critic Cucutus. I'm a monk and today we are in Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous and we're doing another beginner's guide for a character build. Today's character build is going to be that of the Negus. Now I absolutely love this character. It's actually the character that I started the game with. Um, however, it is one of the more complicated builds and it is a little bit tricky to kind of like build out successfully. Um, that being said, there is no right or wrong way to play this game. Feel free to role play and you'll see as I build this character that I'm going for a bit of a role play myself. I love the idea of this character and I love the role play of this character as well as what they can do on the battlefield. Now, I should probably start by explaining exactly what a Negus is. They are a hybrid between melee attacks and magic as well. They can always cast and use magic attacks as long as they have one free hand to do so. So they operate with one-handed weapons and they use their spare hand to cast their, um, their magic. Now... There are a few really good builds to think about when doing a Magus. That is the Armoured Battle Mage, fantastic. And the Sword Saint, possibly one of the strongest builds um, in the game. But what we're going to be focusing on is the Arcane Rider. I just love the idea of this Arcane Rider. Of course, you get the ability to have an animal companion as well because you're going to be riding it. But you also get the ability to mount your companion from level one which is really cool a mounted combat in this game is a little bit overpowered um, animal companions as well overpowered and i just love what i ended up doing with this build the arcane rider is a fabulous fabulous build for anyone that's looking to have a little bit of fun you got to concentrate a little bit more on the battlefield really good if you're going to be starting out this game this is a beginner's guide after all tip really is to be playing this in turn-based combat so you can think about your actions when it comes to picking a race that complements the Megas, a half elf really isn't a bad choice at all, especially as you get a bonus two um, to an ability of your choice. And their elven weapons proficiencies go pretty well um, with this build as well, that being a one handed weapon needed. Humans ultimately are a good race to pick for no matter what class you're doing. They get a bonus to ability of your choice plus an extra feat as well. So humans again could be your pick for this too. After that I would say honestly consider looking at the half orc. Now I know most people are going to be thinking about what well, the orc is a melee build. Absolutely right but you have to remember that a Megas class is both magic and melee so if you're going to be wanting someone to sit on the front line then having an orc really isn't a bad option and they're more versatile than people give them credit for unfortunately they're often overlooked for these classes of characters but give it a go and you probably are not going to be disappointed i love playing as an orc just because of the interaction you get with everyone else as well but personally, my preferred choice and what I'm kind of role playing as at the moment is a Dampier. These guys are absolute brutes and work as a Magus extremely well. And what I like most about playing a Dampier, apart from the role playing purposes, is when it comes to a Magus, you kind of want someone with high intelligence, maybe high dexterity. And the Dampier heritages actually come with high dexterity honestly in heritages there aren't really any bad choices they all have their bonuses and their negatives but personally i like the bottom one it comes with a plus two to dexterity and intelligence which are the two stats that i like to put points on when it comes to my arcane rider it also doesn't hurt that you get a plus two to use magical device checks when it comes to it being your main character and going through the world coming up against all the things you're going to come up against. 
having anybody that is into magical device checks is really useful. Backgrounds are up next. And what I would say to you is remember the build that you're going for and pick something that is going to help you and your build. In the last video, we went for the leader. We went for the noble line because we were looking to use great swords. Well, with this character, we're not going to be using great swords because if we use a two handed weapon, that means we're not going to be able to cast our magic. So pick accordingly. There aren't really too many wrong answers because at the end of the day, it is all opinion based anyway. Now for the all important stats. Now intelligence and dexterity are the two most important stats when it comes to this character and this build. And first up, of course, is intelligence. You need a high intelligence with this character. It means that your spells will be stronger and you'll be able to remember more of them every time you rest. So put as many points into this as you can. Obviously, you want to be optimizing for a t total of 20 when you can afford it. Your second priority has got to be dexterity. After your Magus has cast a um, use their magic, the next step is going to be attacking with their melee weapon. Typically, this means attacking with a finesse weapon, and that explains why you need a high dexterity. And of course, try and remember that as a Magus, as somebody that's going to be doing, you know, on mount combat, both magic and melee, that means you're going to be needing extra points in constitution because you're going to be needing those extra hit points to take those hits after you're done casting your spells. Now, wisdom and charisma really aren't too important for this character. Obviously, charisma, you're going to be wanting charisma for certain persuasion checks. If this is your main character, then again, extra charisma could be very useful to you. So think about that. But for this character, for this build, wisdom and charisma are the two skills you probably do not need to worry about the most. And so we are on to skill points. Now, as you can see, the game automatically recommends a few things for you. Athletics being one of them. And again, one that I would highly recommend using. After that, arcane knowledge and world knowledge are probably a good call as well. And then I would use a point on persuasion. If this is your main character, having those extra points on persuasion is never a bad go because it gives you, you know, a few extra things you can do when it comes to the dialogue. Next, we are on to the feats and it could be pointed out that the Dampiers do have a few extra options and you can get them at later levels. You don't have to get them on turn one blood drinker for me is one to consider because three times a day you can drink from someone who is dead or unconscious and you get an extra five hit points i quite like that kind of buffs you up a little bit and you get an extra chance to role play however the first feat you should absolutely be getting is weapon finesse because it goes with your build it goes hand in hand with what you're trying to do you're trying to give this character as many buffs suited for his role as possible and you are going to be using a finesse weapon after picked you get to pick your animal companion and of course that is going to be the horse it's the only one you actually have access to but as you progress through the game, you can boost that up. Next up, you get to choose your spells. Now, Burning Hands is actually a really good one to pick off the bat. As it's an area of effect attack, I quite like it. You attack anyone within a, a cone of 15 foot with this. After that, I would choose expeditus retreat i think that's quite a useful one flare burst as well very useful magical missiles probably the most powerful spell that you can get early on magic weapon because you're going to be boosting your own personal weapon and shield as well i think could be very very useful and depending if you've done a few extra things you probably have extra room to pick another couple 
of spells or two and it really is about what works best for you there is no wrong answer with this the whole idea of playing as an arcane rider is going to be that of enchanting your weapon or using your spell and in dealing devastating damage on horseback Personally, I also quite like to use enlarge person. If I don't enlarge myself, I like to enlarge one of the other party members um, just because of the extra two to strength that will give them. And again, when it comes to choosing your deity, there really is no wrong choices. Have a little think about how it is you want to play, whether you want to play as lawful, good, evil, chaotic, that kind of thing. And of course, keep in mind the weapon that they favor. For us, we're going to be going for a finesse weapon, um, and, though, and so I pick accordingly. Again, when it comes to having a Dampier, try not to worry too much about not being able to heal yourself. It really isn't as hard as it seems. Also, as you level up, there are a few other things that can help you in regards to this as well. Now, one thing I didn't mention when picking um, your racial class is that it does say that the Dampier, although a living creature, reacts to positive and negative energy as if they were undead. Positive energy harms them, um, while negative energy heals them. Now, when it comes to feats... As you level up, you'll get additional feats. One of the feats you could get is Life Dominant Soul, which means that you are healed by both channeled positive energy um, and negative energy as well. Of course, this is only half as much as it would be um, if you weren't a Dampier and if you didn't have this. Um, but as you're not like a absolute solid tank, your health point shouldn't be that crazy anyway. You really shouldn't need... You know this but if you are worried about being able to heal yourself that is something you can get to counteract that so that way your negative isn't really a negative after all also as you level up there's also another skill you can get called dimensional rider where you can actually teleport on horseback across the map when it comes to turn-based combat that really does mean that you can flank your enemies and really control that battlefield as this character i really love the idea as a dampier arcane rider i just think it sounds really cool it plays really cool and it's an extremely strong build don't forget, guys, if you have anything that you would change about this build, pop that down in the comments. And, of course, the best comment I will pin with the most information to help any other viewer kind of understand the build or maybe even understand your suggested build for the, um, for the Magus as well. And if you have enjoyed this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that like button and, of course, subscribe to the channel. It really does help this channel grow. And if you want an even better way to help this channel grow, I've recently finished a sci-fi dystopian novel. It is available for pre-order on Amazon, and that link will be down in the description. And if you need a place to chat about Pathfinder, Wrath of the Righteous, Bills, or just any other game you may be stuck on, of course, we do have that Discord, and a link for that is down in the description as well. But until next time, guys, I've been a monk, we've been a Chrissy Kudus, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy, and of course, as ever, happy gaming.